Hi everybody, I'm Lori Reynolds. I'm here with Zephyr today to show you how to teach the double bean trick. So the dog walks across two boards with his, one set of paws on each board. Um, your final behavior is going to look like this and then I'll talk about equipment since he's raring to go here. Okay. Yes, very good. Oh, she did. You, he cheated on that one and went across with both paws on that side, so I want to do that again. That one's good boy. Okay, so let me talk about what I've got here. These are just a couple of two by threes I had in my garage. I covered them with the uh, self stick craft foam so that they provide a nice, smooth, and non skid surface for the dogs. And I just put them between my two pedestal tables. Um, my pedestal tables have yoga matting on them, so they are also non-skid. Whatever you put these boards on, it needs to be non-skid so that the boards don't slide as your dogs are trying to walk across them. So let's talk about how to get started with this trick. The very first thing you're going to do is you're going to take these boards and put them on something that's fairly low. So starting on the floor, I tried that initially. And there's no incentive for the dog to keep his paws on the boards. It's just as comfortable to walk on the floor and the boards and the floor on the boards as it is to actually walk across the boards. So what I decided to do is try teaching it with the boards raised up just a couple of inches, just far enough that it's not comfortable for the dog to reach down and step on the ground with their paws. So I'm going to set that up and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I've got these boards just propped on a couple of two by threes, um, little scraps that I had. Uh, make sure whatever you're using is, again, non-skid so the dogs don't get scared if the board slide. And all we're going to do initially is reward the dogs for any interaction with these boards on the ground. Okay, so if he goes, my cookies, if he goes and yes, touches them at all, then I'm going to reward that interaction. Yes, good boy. Good job. And I'm holding these so that they don't slide too far. You want to make sure that they don't slip on the dogs. Yes, very good. He's got all four feet on. I am going to give him multiple rewards for that in position. Yes, good boy. Nice job. Very good. Okay. Once they're very comfortable doing this, um, then we're going to start asking them to walk across. These boards are probably about two inches across. You want them, um, if you look at his front end, you want them where the dogs are more inclined to put their paws on either board and not just one. Play with the spacing for your dogs and see what, you, what your dog is most comfortable with. All right, so I'm going to move him down to one end for the next step. And I'm going to ask him just to walk across these boards. Now, at first, I'm going to reward for even a couple of steps. And you can see that it's not very comfortable for him to get his feet through. So they're going to start trying really hard to keep their feet up on the board. Oh boy, whoops. Unless you're holding the cookie at a funny angle like I was. Get that one. And I'm going to reward that. I'm at a really awkward angle for him since I'm taping. Um, but I'm going to reward that he had paws on for most of the way. I'm going to try to get a little bit square. There we go. Boy, boy. And toss that treat off. Do that the other way. Yes, good boy. This way again. Oh, try again. Now, he fell off, so I'm not going to reward that. Once they get to this stage, I'm going to move him out and have him come back across the other way. Easy, buddy. Yes. The other thing I'm going to caution you, good boy, don't have that cookie, wait, <laughs> don't have that cookie right in front of their face um, because then they can't pay attention to where their feet are. So you do want to be luring them a little bit with your hand. I usually do it with just an open hand, but if you get that cookie right on their face, you can see he is paying absolutely no attention to where those boards are. So I want to have that cookie out of my hand and just be luring him across with my hand itself. Okay. Yes, that was much better. Okay, once you get to this step, 
good boy. Um, then if you're so inclined, this is actually fine for the trick uh, to have it at this level as long as the dogs are doing it independently and you're not luring, um, you're not sitting down next to them pulling your hand across the boards. Um, if you want to take it to the next level, you can put it on your pedestal, but again, make sure that it's a non-skid surface and you just take it up to the pedestals and then you walk them across. Now, some dogs will be a little bit worried being, <laughs> um, being up higher. Uh, just take it really slow and pretend that they don't know how to walk across them yet and do one or two steps and then reward and one nice job one or two steps and then reward and build that confidence or you can also just take it up intermediate by degrees um, so that it goes up slowly to whatever height you want really I don't think there's any reason to have this above about 12 inches um, that way if the dogs fall they're not going to hurt themselves these I just have available and so they're the easiest surface and I have a totally fearless dog who doesn't mind walking at that height. Make it to your standards, make it where your dogs are successful and confident and not scared. If your dog starts exhibiting a lot of signs of stress, and that goes for any trick you're teaching, stop, go back a step, and if your dog really does not enjoy what you're doing, there's no reason for them to learn that particular trick. Teach them something else. All right, that's it. If you guys have any questions, post in the Facebook group, and I will answer them as best I can. Thanks.